Hello everyone, welcome to Salesforce Atlas. My name is Dorisa. If you're new to the channel, it's really great to see you in my channel. And uh, in today's episode, I would like to discuss with you how to handle flow errors. Now, as we know, Salesforce is going to very soon retire process builder and you can't build already any more workflow rules. And uh, I put a lot of effort now into learning more and more about flows that is, as it is a very important tool for any Salesforce administrator. I will show you a way how to narrow down flow error emails and make it more specific so you don't put too much time into going through every single element and trying to figure out where exactly it went wrong. I saw this example on Salesforce and uh, I'm sure that uh, you will find this useful, especially if you are new to Salesforce administration. So follow the video and hope this is going to work for you as well. Um, as always, I'm um, in one of my Trailhead playgrounds and I have already created two flows. I will show you both of them and I thought it would be just quicker um, and shorter to make this video if they're ready as I've dealt already with uh, all errors that I had and uh, minor issues and actually figure out, figured out what could cause an error in my flow. All right, just to start with, um, as you all may know, when you are working with flows, there can appear errors and the last person who have dated the flow will receive errors. The email looks something like this. Usually it is a very long, long string of your elements and actions, like flow interviews, entry conditions and results. And you're very lucky if you can tell from the very beginning where it went wrong. Like in this case, I've triggered one of my validation rules. However, it is not always as easy and you have to put time into uh, finding out what's the issue. But now if I go back to this flow, you will see that I have my condition, I have my object, and I'm using cases. And when it meets the right condition, it will go, it will get the contact. So in my case, I'm creating a web case. I have web email. So I want to also get our existing contact, then update the case. I have web email. I want to find with this email existing contact in Salesforce, populate contact name, populate account account name and later as well update contact objects so mark that this contact has an open case and in details i have this checkbox has open case so if they have an open case i want to tick it and as soon as the uh, case is closed i just untick it that's that's my scenario and when i go back I have given very specific names uh, to these elements now they start with number they start with a letter and number so you can see i have one get element and i have two update elements and uh, my get element will start with g01 it is the only one here and that's fine at least i can still give it the g01 number and then the name i i select it can be any name and for update records they start with the capital u u01 update one and update two, which makes it easier as I've, I'm creating these assignment elements. And if I have a very large flow, it will just get easier and easier to, to create these assignments. Now, if I go down this first route, let's imagine that I couldn't update the case and now I'm going into, uh, into this assignment. So I'm going down the, this faulty route. I open my assignment and um, I have two variables. And if it goes the route number one, I want to assign these values to my variables. So in this case, error number will be AO1, assignment number one, update case, and the error element where the error happened equals U01, update record one. And uh, in the end, when I'm receiving this error email, it is very easy for me to go through the error email and see where the, where the problem was. As you saw previously from that very long email, you can't tell. The same applies to the second one, update record. Update record, U02. If I couldn't update the record and um, there was an error, then it will follow the, this route and go into assignment number two. If I open this assignment, again, I'm reusing these variables. And uh, then in that case, error number, I'm going to give the error number two, AO2, 
update contact and the error element where the where the error occurred is yo2 and it just follows this action email action and i have already created the body i have created the subject and in this case i used a very specific email i manually entered this email address and in another flow i'll show you how you don't manually entering any email addresses but you get more records and then the rich text formatting equals true because if I go back to my email body and error subject there uh, in a rich text format, I have created as well this uh, error email template. I have my details, it can be anything, and I'm pulling information from this flow. I have the running user, a running user email address, user ID, login, user profile, troubleshooting, error timestamp, timestamp, when it happened, fault message, interview good, interview start time, and record details. I've decided to go with the current record ID, case number, web email, web name, web company. These are just some, some things that I've decided to put in my email. As error subject also I changed from plain text to rich text, and that would be the subject. So it's easy to understand which flow caused this issue. I want to debug. And if I just debug, I think I should be fine with using my existing case. It's the one that you can see here. If I go in here and click run, now my conditions should, yeah, I have prepared conditions where this flow should fail. It tried to, it got contact, contact records. It updated the case, the, the case that triggered this flow and it found an error. It couldn't update records. So as you can see, it went this, this route, uh, route number, let's call it number two, and it's, it triggered an email. And uh, I can see, so it got records, updated records, tried to update records and error, got, error was handled. And assignment number two, send email error, it pulled all the information you could find from the system, the running user was me, and then the login and all the... All right, now it's actually that invalid email address, but I will pull up email that I received and I was testing it a couple of times. So this is what you see in one of my inboxes. You can see we have details. It's easy to read. And I have uh, the very important thing that you can't easily find in the standard flow error email template is the um, where exactly this error occurred. And that's it happened in error element U02, update record element number two, and uh, the error element number AO2. So that's the second assignment, which is incorrect because I changed it recently. So that's actually update contact. It's not get account, it's update contact. And then the troubleshooting and uh, the fault message. So in the update contact, so this is incorrect, it's actually update contact. It couldn't update contact because the contact object has a validation rule. The, the phone formatting was invalid. So then I could easily, it took me just uh, like a few minutes to figure out where the problem was, what was the problem, so I could go back and fix the issue. And uh, here I have my second flow where you don't have to manually put any data such as email address, but if you want specific profile users, in my case, these are Salesforce administrators. I always use this, um, this example because it's easier. And uh, in this case, I have added some more elements, some more get elements. And you can see now instead of only one get element, GO1, I have also GO2 and GO3. I had exactly the same issue uh, or the, the case error for the exact same reason. Now it was trying to update contact there was a validation rule so it failed it went down the second assignment error and in this case i'm going to open so what i've done if i want to if i want to send an email to specific profile users 
instead of manually putting in email address because a people leave and you don't really if you have many flows you don't want to go and manually update this information because you can make a mistake ideally you, you want to pull data from other records in this case i have to get profile i'm getting uh, salesforce administrators system administrators profile and i'm storing the first one because most likely i only have one system administrator in the system and then i'm finding users so the user object, profile ID equals previous record. So this is the profile profile from get admin profile, profile ID, and then saving all records because you can have more than one system administrator, store all fields. You can store them differently. It's up to you. And uh, then the loop element where I want to go through each system administrator save their email address or just gather all system administrators build a small collection and then for each person in this profile i want to send this this email and again you can do it slightly differently but i have used like the same body the same subject and um, i'm using loop through admin emails and pick email so it will actually create a collection of, or, of all emails and send it, send it out. And again, rich text formatting is, uh, is changed to true because I want to use rich text formatting. Yeah, you can see as well here on the side, I have already done some debugging and I have the same issue with custom validation rule. Here you can see it found one administrator. All right, that's me. If I go and open email, email details, error where the problem occurred, what was the problem and um, some other record details it's really easy to read this this information and find the fault instead of going through something like this which is very long and and um, not very efficient and in this in this example the flow is telling me where exactly the problem was and uh, if you look on the right hand side it says that update records vo2 update contact Result failed to update records that meet the filter criteria and the error occurred. And it's again, easy to understand that this is not always as easy as you know. Sometimes it's really difficult to figure out what's the problem. Well, I hope that you found this useful. As you know, flows are here to stay and we have to get very comfortable with them and learn how to handle flow errors. And uh, thanks a lot for getting this far in the video and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.